This is lesson uh, 15.3, volume of a sphere. So a sphere has its own vol volume formula, and the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. 4 thirds pi r cubed. So there is no height part of this volume. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. And here's an example right here where they give us the radius of 4. So volume equals 4 thirds times pi and the radius is 4. So 4 cubed. So 4 cubed. When we're simplifying this, the first thing we should do is 4 times 4 times 4, or 4 cubed, which is 64. So volume equals 4 thirds times pi times 64. I could have put 64 pi, I guess. When multiplying something by 4 thirds, really what you're doing is you're multiplying by the 4 and you're dividing by the 3. Okay, So that's the way I look at it. We'll multiply by 4 and divide by 3 here. And so what we would get is volume equals 64 times 4 is 256 pi. And I still have that divided by 3, and 3 doesn't go into 256 nicely. So it's just volume equals 256 pi over 3. Okay, 256 pi over 3. Another way, if that's a little confusing to you, to look at this is this is really 64 over 1. This is really pi over 1. So we have 3 times 1 times 1 is 3 for our denominator. Pi, um, 4 times pi times 64 to get 256 pi for the numerator. If you look at all those in their fraction form, it makes this a little easier. Then the volume, it is volume, so that'll be centimeters cubed. Well, for the next one, they're asking for the height, okay? So, or the radius. They're looking for the radius. We start with volume equals 4 thirds pi r cubed, just like last time. And this time, they're telling us the volume is 288 pi, okay? 288 pi. So, we'll put that in here. 288 pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And we're looking for what the radius is. We don't know yet. Well, the first thing we could do, we could divide both sides by pi here. There's only one term over here, only one term over here, although this is a complicated term, it's just one term still. If I divide both sides by pi, pi disappears out of both sides. So that's kind of nice. It simplifies things a little bit. Now I just have 288 equals 4 thirds r cubed. Well, I'm multiplying by a fraction. Remember, to get rid of that, I multiply by its reciprocal, or 3 over 4. So I'm multiplying both sides by 3 over 4. So I have 3 over 4 times 288. And I'm going to put that over 1 to make that look a little easier. And 3 over 4 times 4 over 3 r cubed. Well, this is just 12 over 12, which is just 1. So that cancels out. And here I can simplify before I multiply. 4 goes into 288. Well, 4 goes into 28 7 times and 8 twice. So 3 over 1 times 72 over 1. That's a little simpler. This will be 200. 16. So 216 equals r cubed. Well, something times itself, times itself again, hopefully, is 216. 6 times 6 equals 36, times 6 is 216. The cubed root of 216, so to solve this, to show that step, we would do not square root, but cubed root, cubed root. We get 6 on this side, and we get r on this side. The radius is 6, 
inches. The radius is six inches, which is what they came up with. Good for them. Now we have a couple of on your own problems. So for number one, and I'm going to put the formula up here. I'm not going to put it down here in my workspace. So I've got volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. And here we're looking for the volume. So volume equals four thirds pi, and the radius is eight, not 16, but eight. Eight cubed. Well, eight times eight equals 64 times eight again gives us 512. So now I have volume equals four thirds times 512 pi. Remember, I'm multiplying by four and I'm dividing by three here. So, because this is the same as just over one, four times 512 is four times 512 is 2048. pi over 3. Okay, so 2048 pi over 3. 3 cannot go evenly into 2048. So we leave our answer 2048 pi over 3 and that is feet cubed because we're talking about volume. For the second problem, we'll be solving for the uh, radius. And so volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. 36 pi is the volume equals four thirds pi r cubed. Pi is on each side, so we can divide by pi, divide by pi, leaving with 36 equals four thirds r cubed. Multiply each side by 3 over 4. 3 over 4 times 36. 3 over 4 times 4 thirds r cubed. These will cancel each other out. And over here I can simplify before I multiply. 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 36 nine times. So now I have 27 3 times 9, 27 equals r cubed. And if I take the cubed root of each of those, the cubed root of r cubed is just r, or radius. And here, what times itself, times itself again, is 27. 3, of course. So 27, the cubed root of 27 is 3. We were looking for the radius, so it's not going to be cubed. It's just going to be meters, 3 meters is our radius. Well now you should be able to go over and look at the homework that goes along with 15.3 which is journal page 360 and it'll be doing volumes of spheres and I think that's all it does. I don't even think it asks you to find the radius like we did here. Now these two on your own problems to end this lesson are problems that are just composite solids finding the volume. There will not be any like this on your homework or on the questions for the end of this uh, lesson. But you can just watch them because it's so darn much fun. So I'm going to look at this as um, two different things. Actually, I have two half spheres, so that's one whole sphere and this cylinder in the middle. Well, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height, and the volume of that sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. I'll do the cylinder first. Pi, the radius here, is just two. So two squared will be four. And the height is not eight. Because uh, if this is a two for a radius, that radius would also go straight out this way. So that's two out here. Also, two going back this way, leaving only four for the cylinder height. So four, this would give me 16 pi inches cubed for the volume of the cylinder in the middle there. 
Then I've got the volume of the sphere, the two half spheres to make a sphere. Give me 4 thirds times pi. The radius is 2, so 2 cubed. Well, 2 cubed is 8. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So I have 4 thirds times 8 pi. I'll put this 8 pi over 1 to make this look a little more simple. That gives me 32 pi over 3. 32 pi over 3. 3 doesn't go into 32 evenly, so that's where I would end. And now I'm going to add, this is inches cubed. Because these are both pi terms, I can add them. So I have 16 pi plus 32 pi over 3. Well, I need common denominators. This has a denominator of 1. So I'll use 3 as my common denominator. This one gets to stay the same, 32 pi over 3. I'll have to multiply top and bottom by 3 here to get 48 pi over 3. Now I can add them, and I get 48 plus 32 pi is 80 pi over 3, and it's still inches cubed. That's as simple as I can get leaving it in terms of pi. For the other composite figure, which is uh, like a crayon shape, I guess you'd call that, although I'm quite sure that's not a technical term, but it should be, I have a cylinder and a cone. So for the volume of a cylinder, I have pi r squared times the height. For the volume of the cone, I have one-third pi r squared times the height. So I'll do the cylinder first again. Here the cylinder is a 9 for the height and a 3 for the radius. So pi 3 squared times 9. 3 squared is 9, so I have 9 pi times 9, which is 81 pi meters cubed. Over here, 1 third times pi now the radius is the same, so it's uh, 3 squared, which is 9, times the height of the cone is that 5 right there, so times 5. I'll do 1 third of 9 pi, that'll give me 3 pi times 5, which is 15 pi meters cubed. Well, the cone part of this is 15 pi meters cubed. The cylinder is 81 pi meters cubed. And of course, if I put those two together, adding them, I get 96 pi meters cubed for the total volume of the crayon shape there. Excellent. Well, thanks for sticking around till the end of the video. See ya!